my fool of a took. Today's video is going to include quite a bit of 3D printing, but with good reason, because I'm taking a look at these awesome slice and slot windows, doors, arches and architraves from Microforge Minis. Now before you click off because there's some 3D printing going on, just hear me out. One of the things I hear most often in my comments is that there are people who would love to be able to make detailed models, but they just don't have the time to develop the skills because life is so busy. And that's where Albert from Microforge Minis has provided quite a clever solution. The idea being that anyone with one centimeter thick XPS foam can make detailed medieval style buildings for their tabletop with extreme ease. These slice and slot files give you the freedom to add detail to buildings of any shape, limited only by your imagination. You still with me? But you don't have a 3D printer, right? That's actually not a problem because over on the Kickstarter, Albert has made these available as a physical pledge as well as the STL files. Not only that, they're also going to be available in 3D print stores around the world that are close to you so you can order them easily online as well. Right, now I've got all of my prints sorted out. I'm going to have to actually make a building. I haven't actually designed anything in my head. I figured I'd just print it all off and then see where I got to. So let's see just how easy this really is. I've actually only recently got to know Albert from Microforge Minis. He was part of the collaboration I did with Sort Resort back in December and straight away his project jumped out at me because of the slice and slot system. I just thought it was a really clever design and I had to give it a go. With this system you do need some jigs however so that you end up cutting your foam correctly. I printed out the templates and just made some cardboard jigs the way you might have seen me do before but you can get MDF jigs as part of the whole slice and slot package. I don't have a laser cutter and I didn't want to wait for someone else to cut some and send them out to me. Once you have your jigs you simply cut your one centimeter thick XPS foam in your desired shape, add your brake texture and hey presto you are making buildings. And why is it called slice and slot? Well it's not just a clever name. One of my favourite features that comes with the slice and slot set is the architraves or trims that you can add to the tops of your walls. I used them to crest the arcade section of my build. I decided to add some damage to mine with a Dremel just to break up the pattern a little and make them look a little more weathered. Once that was done, it really was just a matter of cutting the foam and gradually figuring out the layout of my build. I didn't want to veer off course too much, so I was definitely taking influence from Gondorian structures that we see in the movies, but I knew that I wanted to use one of the larger arches in the set to create a feature in one of the walls, like some kind of Numenorian shrine but I will come back to that a little later on in the video. Some of you guys might be watching this and wondering if you can do this kind of build without the use of a Proxon, and the answer is yes, 100%. There is absolutely no need for a Proxon. I do have one though, and I thought I'd be an absolute twit not to use it, especially because the amount of time I get to craft is a lot less lately. I kind of set myself up a production line and made all of my cuts pretty quick just so I could get cracking on with the build. As you can see there are loads of brick patterns to score into the foam and lots of textures to add and this does take time but pretty much zero skill whatsoever. You could cut all of this foam easily with a hobby knife so don't let the Proxon factor deter you. Once you have all of your XPS foam panels cut and textured and you have primed your 3D prints it's time to just start gluing everything together. Normally I use wood glue for sticking my foam buildings together but with the slice and slot files I wanted an instant secure bond so hot glue worked perfectly for that. Once the slice and slot pieces are secure then I carry on with wood glue and pinning and basically piece the whole project together like a 3D jigsaw puzzle. With my foam structure complete I used some cardboard to give the roof the shape that it needed to start adding shingles. Now it's almost a meme at this point but shingles can be a right pain in the ass so this is the perfect opportunity for me to introduce another friend of mine to you, Tyler from PropFox. Tyler has a business creating all sorts of laser cut MDF and cardboard kits for hobbyists to add all manner of detail to their projects. I picked up some shingles for my build and I am so glad that I did rather than cut my own or place individual shingles on the build because this saved me a ton of time. I managed to knock out the whole roof in about an hour or so while I was hanging out over on my Discord server with some very very cool people. Of course I will leave a link for Tyler's Prop Fox shop in the description below and I will also link his YouTube channel. And this was also another perfect opportunity to invite you guys to Discord. If you are interested in some hobby hangouts and sharing your latest project, 
let me know in the comments below and I'll share a Discord link with you. You might ask why I used a black primer on the 3D prints in this project when I am going to be just painting the whole thing white. Well, there is no clever answer to that. I just didn't have any white primer to hand at the time. The paint job for this build is absolutely pinched from Zorp Zorp, by the way. This is exactly the same approach I took with the Strategium Tower that I made back in December, and it's basically the perfect paint scheme for Gondorian structures, so why reinvent the wheel? Oh, and here I have to do another quick shout out to Dave from Kitbash Box for the design of the awesome Gondorian statue that I used in my shrine. I will leave a link to Kitbash Box and Lockie's tutorial for this paint scheme in the description as well. But this scheme is really, really simple. Basically, it's adding some browns and greys to individual bricks in random dispersal across the whole build, followed by a light grey over brushing to blend it all together and then topping it all off with a healthy dose of white. Once the white is complete, then you give the whole project a good dousing in a black wash. Now this project didn't start out as a collaboration, but it was at this point that a little serendipity struck and actually gave a new purpose to the build I was making. Hello. Hey dude, how's it going? Um, I was just wondering if you could hook me up with some gondor buildings to display my next project on. Yeah, I think I could probably knock you something up pretty quick. That's awesome. Thanks, dude. Really appreciate it. Uh, I would need something in return, man, if that's okay. Uh, okay, yeah. Just tell me what it is. Build me a army worthy of Mordor. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Sure, dude, yeah. I'll, um, I'll do that as soon as possible. Nice one, Dean. All right, chat soon, man. Sweet. Right. Let's get this roof painted. Nice one. I know it's a bit lazy, but getting your mates to paint up armies for you definitely leaves you with a little more time to build terrain. Besides, Dean is getting a pretty tidy build out of this deal, so I don't feel too bad about it. For this building, I'm going for the classic Gondorian blue slate look, mixing up a dark blue grey for the base coat and gradually working my way up with highlights by adding some white to the mix. And then it's on to the last few details. With the doors, I just used an oak brown from Army Painter and I didn't bother doing any highlights on these. Once I had painted all of the metal work on the doors, I thought I'd just add Agrax Earthshade Wash, which darkens down the recesses and also makes the metal work look a little more worn and weathered. I also added patches of this wash around the build to give it that weather beaten look. I actually really wanted to use a Thonian Camo shade for this, but it got lost in the post. Anyway, with the washes done, the building is pretty much complete. This is definitely one of the easiest and most satisfying projects I've made in quite a while, mostly because it came together so quickly, so you must go and check out Microforge Minis and these STL files for the Slice and Slaw system. Albert from Microforge Minis has also made a video today using these files, but also showing off how to do better cornering for your ruins for the tabletop. So definitely go and check that out, I'll leave a link in the description below this video. I'm just sitting here adding in some of the Urukai that Dean has painted up for me. And I also have some Gondorian forces that were painted up by my friend Benji from Benji's Hobbies. But I kind of ran out of time and I didn't do a skit with Benji. So he's also released a video today and he's got some seriously cool minis that you will not have seen before. And they're Middle Earth. So go and check that out. And of course, don't forget Dave from Kitbash Box for the Gondorian statues and Tyler from Prop Fox for the awesome shingles. All of the guys that I've mentioned are bringing awesome content and resources to the community, so please go and check them out. The links are in the description below this video. Thanks for watching, and until next we meet, Nalaway Govanad Vin. Hang on, so what you're telling me is I don't even get a phone call now? <laughs> you absolute bull.